dust to dust. May God have mercy on the soul of this man. Man? Did he say man? There wasn't a man in that box that were a monster. And God won't have mercy on his soul either, because Edward Hyde never had a soul. <laughs> story. And yes, he really was a monster. You see, I used to work for Edward Hyde a long time ago. But perhaps I shouldn't tell you any more. Go on, Nanny. Go on, please. Well, not only was Edward Hyde a murderer and a monster, he was also two men. Two men? How can anyone be two men, Nanny? Hush, boys, you'll see. You'll see. But first, we must go back to the house where I worked as a young housemaid for a certain Dr. Henry Jekyll. One of the finest men in all of England. As I remember, it was his birthday. Well, Henry, a very happy birthday indeed, and to your future. May it be even more prosperous and successful. To Henry. To Henry. Yeah, to Henry. My dear friends, thank you. From the very depths of my heart. Well, Henry, you're a man with the world at your feet. Hmm? All of England has come to know of your brilliant achievements. So tell us, what will you do next? I cannot give you the exact details yet. But it has to do with the workings of the human mind. But my dear Jekyll, you're with trusted friends here. Not a word of what you tell us will escape this room. Oh, do tell us, Henry. It all sounds fascinating. Very well, then. I'll tell you something of it. I have a theory that the human mind is made of two parts. One part good, and the other part evil. And that throughout the lives of all human beings, there is a constant battle between the two parts. Good against evil. My dear Jekyll, I'm afraid I just cannot agree with you. It's my opinion, people are born good or, or born bad. Simple as that, mark my words. The truth is that neither of us knows. But just suppose that I'm right. Just suppose. And that by the use of drugs, it was possible to separate good and evil. And then what, Jekyll? What purpose would it serve? Don't you see? We just might be able to remove the evil from man. The creation of the perfect human being. A being without the influence of evil. A whole society based only on good. Oh, what are you saying, Henry? You've taken leave of your senses. I've never heard of such balderdash and poppycock in my life. They're absolute rubbish. Happy birthday, Dr. Jekyll, from us all. None of us could work for a finer master than you in all England. God bless you, and many happy returns. Happy birthday! What a lovely evening. Yes, Henry, delightful night. Thank you. Well, good night, Henry. Charming evening, huh? Charming. But, uh, I'd put all those mad notions of good and evil aside. It won't work, you know. Dangerous, too. I'll bear it in mind. Good night, and thank you. You are good friends.
Our good friend Lanyon wants proof, eh? He doesn't think we are a mixture of good and evil? Now, the last of the ingredients. Lucky to find it. a miracle. Only your eyes will see what might indeed frighten the devil himself. You're a lucky man, Jekyll. A good doctor, born rich, wanting for nothing, able to help the sick and the poor. At last, on the brink of a discovery that will astound the world. If this experiment works, I will have separated the two parts within me. It will free my evil nature and leave me with my good self. That should put an end to Lanyon's scorn once and for all. If I fail, then I will die. And you alone can tell. God help me. Make it work. Jekyll, 
first. I want you to write a will, leaving all your money to me. Should anything happen to you, like disappearing, <laughs> I... You're a monster. Do as I say, gentlemen. Obey your stronger self. I command you. To whom it may concern, this is the last will and testament of myself, Dr. Henry Jekyll. In the event of my death or disappearance, Mr. Edward Hyde will be my sole beneficiary. You see, something terrible was happening to Dr. Jekyll. Hyde was taking over Jekyll's mind and his fortune. What a horrible man, Nanny. Did Hyde do more bad things? Yes, he did. Again and again. But each time, he would disappear afterwards and no one knew who he was or where he went. Except, of course, Dr. Jekyll. Day, if you ask me. Don't touch that. I only wanted to clean up, sir. Don't you know to leave my study alone? No, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to upset you, sir. You touch nothing in here. Understand? Nothing. Yes, Dr. Jekyll. I'll remember, sir. Nothing. Tell Poole I want all the servants assembled immediately. Now on, I'll supervise the cleaning of my study. Oh, yes, yes doctor. doctor. One more thing. From time to time, an associate of mine, who is helping me, will come to visit. A Mr. Edward Hyde. I may not always be here when he calls, but I want him to have the freedom of my home and my study. Oh, yes, yes sir. sir. Treat him as you would me. He won't disturb you. In fact, he will have his own keys to come and go as he pleases. Otherwise, the door of my study will be locked. Paul, I want this hand delivered to my friend, Mr. Utterson, the lawyer. Very good, sir. Oh, dear God, what have I done? What have I done? Letter for Mr. Utterson from Dr. Jekyll. Make sure he gets it, won't you? Very well. I, I'll see to it. Hmm. A, a letter for you, sir. Personal, from Dr. Jekyll. 
Ah, oh, thank you, guest. Uh, good grief. What on earth's the matter, sir? This is Jekyll's last will and testament. He's left everything to a complete stranger. A certain Edward Hyde. Hyde? Did you hear that, Enfield? Another murder. When will it all end? Goodness knows. The police seem powerless. The brute seems to vanish into thin air. Not even a clue. Yes. Shocking business. Have you ever noticed that door before? Yes. Why do you ask? There was a nasty incident one night. I was coming home late. Stopped at a pub to warm up. He disappeared. But that house... That house belongs to a monster who would attack women and old men. A devil of a man. I saw him do it myself. You must be mistaken. No, there's no mistake. What do you know of this fiend you speak of? An evil creature. He has a fearful face and cares little for his fellow man. Do you know his name? Yes, I found out later by chance. It's Edward Hyde. Edward Hyde? Yes, Hyde. Not much of a name either, eh? Enfield, it could be the name of the very devil himself. Well then, what brings you here? A matter of common interest. Our old friend, Henry. Ah, uh, yes. I'm getting very tired of this nonsense he talks. Good and evil, two parts to the mind. It's all balderdash, you know. I must confess, it rather spoiled my evening the night of his birthday. Quite frightening, really. But precisely. And it's all such unscientific rubbish. I find it disagreeable. You don't see any value in this experiment? Absolutely not. It's impossible. We might as well try to fly to the moon. Impossible. Well, how can anyone expect to separate the good and evil in man? I know, a ridiculous suggestion. By the way, did you ever meet a friend of his? An Edward Hyde? No, never heard of him. I'm sorry, sir. Dr. Jekyll must have gone out. With Mr. Hyde? I don't rightly know, sir. Mr. Hyde has his own keys. He comes and goes all the time. But we see little of him in this part of the house. Is there a message? No, I'll call again. I would like to meet him, one way or another. <laughs>
Mr. Hyde. <laughs> it's me. What do you want? I'm an old friend of Dr. Jekyll. My name is Utterson. I'd like to come in and talk to you and Jekyll. Jekyll's away from home. How did you know me? He spoke of you. That's a lie. I know he doesn't talk about me. Be good enough to tell Jekyll I called. Uh, uh, it's as well we met. As Jekyll's solicitor, you may want to contact me sometime. <laughs> Poor Utterson. What am I doing to my friends? If only they knew. Dr. Jekyll? <coughs> Dr. Jekyll? <coughs> Dr. Jekyll? It's Annie. I've brought your morning tea. Leave it there, Annie. Get it in a minute. wasn't up there with a the doctor. I got a real fright, I did, seeing him here this morning in the house. He gives me the creeps. I can't see what the master wants with him. I never saw such an ugly face. Like the devil himself. Mark my words, love. There's something terrible going on in this house. live together, the harder it is for me to control Hyde. If Hyde takes over my body as well, I will have to give up all the good things of my life, all my hopes for the future. As Hyde, I have no friends. I'm hated and feared. My double life is becoming impossible. I cannot continue as Hyde. I must choose my better self. Be rid of him forever. I'm glad I came by. You've been looking much better lately. More like your old self. I'm not so sure. I can't help feeling restless. I'm beginning to think I need a change. Well, perhaps a holiday. You shouldn't work so hard. Now, that's not what I mean. I'm afraid you'll never understand. <coughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to my study, urgently. Three times the dose. That's got to stop him coming back. <coughs> Dr. 
Jekyll. Are you all right? It's Poole and Bradshaw, sir. Go away. Leave me alone. I'm all right. Just leave. Go away. It was Mr. Hyde breaking loose. We didn't know that at the time. We thought poor Dr. Jekyll had lost his mind. But it was Hyde. He'd been locked away too long inside Dr. Jekyll all that time while Dr. Jekyll was his good self. Then, without warning, Mr. Hyde came back like a wild animal escaping from its cage, roaring. Did he hurt you? No. I was lucky. Dr. Jekyll should have tried to escape. He did. That's what started the doctor taking larger doses of the drugs to get away from Hyde, to try to stop Hyde appearing. And that made him very sick. The drugs weren't working. And Hyde knew it. <laughs> Dr. Jekyll, are you all right? It's Poole and Bradshaw, sir. Oh. Oh. Go away. Leave me alone. I'm all right. Just leave. Go away. You must have heard the news. Of course. The paper boys are shouting it from the street corners. I need to be sure, Henry, that you're not hiding the fiend. I fear the murder weapon was your own walking stick, stolen from you, no doubt. If you were not my friend and client, I'd have to report that to the police. Oh, you mustn't do that. Hyde's not here. I will never see him again, I swear to you. Uh, look. Dear Henry, I know you will be shocked at all I have done. You're well rid of me. I will disappear, and I promise you will never hear from me again. I'd like to keep this if I may. Now, there's one more thing I must know. Did Hyde tell you what to write in that will of yours? Then there's no doubt. He meant to murder you too. I think I'll take a walk, Paul. I've been stuck in the house too long. Now I feel like some fresh air. I'm glad you're better, sir. 
a lovely day for a stroll. Bring me pen and paper right away, and I'll call when I'm ready. I'll need someone to deliver a couple of letters urgently. <laughs> to Dr. Hasty Lanyon. Don't let your dinner get cold, Dovey. Whatever it is, can wait. Not so, my dear. This is a most urgent demand for help from a colleague. He asks me to meet with a friend of his at midnight. I don't like the sound of that, Hasty. Can't it wait till after dinner? No, I'm afraid not. He says it's all in the cause of medicine. I must go this instant. But I have an urgent errand first. My instructions from Dr. Jekyll, sir, are to open that door, whatever the cost, even if it means breaking it down. I'm sure I don't understand. I'm worried about the master. Yes, I understand your fears, Poole. When did he leave the house? This morning, sir. He said he wanted some fresh air. He was only going to the park and back. Yes, yeah, well, he, he obviously got caught up somewhere and needs our help. Though I'll admit, this is a strange way of getting it. Well, there you are, Gov. Sorry it took so long. I've got a broken to the Bank of England in half the time, eh? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Draw with straw, or then wrap a sheet around it. Yeah, that way I can carry it home without spilling the contents. Oh, don't worry, Poole. I'm sure to see him this evening. You come from Dr. Jekyll? Yes. Your service, Dr. Lanyon. <laughs> and I wouldn't call the police if I were you. Not if you care about your friend, Henry Jekyll. Henry? If you've harmed Henry, I swear I'll... Dr. Jekyll is safe enough in the meantime. In fact, this was all his idea. <laughs> Did you bring the cabinet drawer? Yes. There, behind the chair. <laughs> Now watch carefully. 
carefully, Lanyon. I'm about to show you something that can bring you fame and power like you've never imagined. Now look here, sir. You didn't come in in the middle of the night to waste my time and speak in riddles. Now so, uh, get on with it. So be it. And now, Dr. Lanyon, for you, who for so long scorned the idea of a connection between medicine and the forces of good and evil. <laughs> Oh, my God! It's you! Henry. Oh, dear. Perhaps I shouldn't have told them that. Too frightening. No, no! Tell us more, tell us more. Well, after that dreadful night, Dr. Jekyll became a prisoner in his own home, seeing no one, terrified to go out, lest the monster... Edward Hyde reappear. His only hope being that he might discover a drug that will make Hyde disappear forever. Meanwhile, not far away, Dr. Jekyll's dear friend, Dr. Lanyon, lay gravely ill. Such was the effect of learning the awful secret. And then, Mr. Utterson, the lawyer, called. My dear Mrs. Lanyon, what is it? Surely things can't be that bad. Only last week it was. Fate stepped in. A week ago he was himself, good as gold, and now... I fear he's dying. But what happened? He must have told you. He refuses to speak of it. He says he cannot. There was an urgent call, a mysterious note. He went out. And that's all I know. Perhaps, as his oldest friend and a lawyer, he might trust me. I will never recover. A matter of weeks, if that. My dear chap, surely with good medicine. There is nothing I can take to change the way I feel. I wish there were. Perhaps your illness is catching. Jekyll is sick too. Have you seen him lately? Don't mention that name to me. I finished with that man. I don't ever want to see or hear of him again. He refuses to see me. I'm not surprised. One day you might learn the truth of this. But don't ask me. Now, if you'd like to talk of other things, please stay. Otherwise, go. I have your order from the chemist, Dr. Jekyll. Here you are, Mr. Poole. Sit down. You look like you've seen a ghost. I only saw him for a minute, but it made my hair stand on end. If that was the master, why was he wearing a mask on his face? Maybe he's caught one of those horrible diseases that marks your face. That would explain the mask and his strange voice. And not wanting to see his friends. And why he needs that drug from the chemist. And why he won't let us near him. But I've served him 20 years. Why would he cry out like a rat and run from me? Oh, I was picking herbs out in the side garden. Oh, suddenly, this parcel was thrown from the window upstairs. Oh, he just missed me. Oh, I'm scared me to death it did. It had another note tied to it. Oh. Quick, cook. The smelling salts. Oh. This drug you bought me today is useless. Without delay, go again and send Bradshaw and Annie out as well, if necessary, to every chemist in London. Glory be. You'll all be gone for weeks.
Good heavens, Poole. What brings you here at this hour? What is the matter? Mr. Alderson, something's terribly wrong. There's been a horrible crime. What sort of crime? Whatever do you mean? I can't say what I mean, sir. Please come and see for yourself. Begging your pardon, sir. We're all so afraid. He's been screaming for that drug again. What drug? We don't rightly know, sir. But whatever it's for, it's wanted very urgently. He wrote this note a week ago, and we can't get the right stuff for him. To Moore and Company, druggists. Two years ago, I bought a large quantity of these drugs from you for experiments. What you sent me is inferior and will not work. Whatever the cost, for God's sake, find me the old stuff. Did you get it? We've been to every chemist in London. We don't know what to do next. I knew it. Something bad's happened to the master. Oh, God. That's Mr. Hyde up there. He's murdering the master. Good Lord. Hyde, are you sure? We fear it might be, sir. Did you call the police? You being Dr. Jekyll's lawyer, we thought you'd tell us what to do. Well then, we must act. Ladies, you stay here. It's unlikely he'll get past us, but just in case, be on the ready. Calm yourself, Bradshaw. We're all nervous, but we'll soon put an end to it. You, you're round the corner and wait outside the back entrance. Whatever happens, I take all responsibility. If we have to, Poole and I will force our way into the study. We'll give you ten minutes to be ready at your places. Go! sinister about all of this. Look, the drugs we were searching for. And this. It's addressed to you, sir. It says, the last will and testament of Dr. Henry Jekyll. What? What is it, sir? Are you all right? I'm still... Stunned. Dr. Jekyll has left me his fortune. But if I knew that, why did he not destroy this document? Perhaps he never had time, sir, with us breaking in like we did. Perhaps. What else is there? The rest of the papers, sir. A letter written with today's date from the master. There are more notes, too. I think we might find answers here to many of the puzzles that have troubled us. What we must do is try to save your master's reputation and good name. Yes, sir. Give me enough time to read these papers. Then we'll call the police. Uh, it still upsets me. Oh, it was a terrible time for all of us. Don't cry, Nanny. What did you do then? Well, it wasn't long after Mr. Utterson sold the house. And we all went to work for other people. Oh, now, boys, we've had more than enough for one night. Oh, it's long past your bedtime. Time to turn off the light and say good night. Good night, Nanny. Good night, Nanny. Well, at least he's at peace now. Yes, a small consolation. Dreadful business. Dreadful. 
We all know that buried here is our friend, Dr. Jekyll. Not the monster Edward Hyde, as the authorities think. I suggest we should tell no one of what we know. It would serve no purpose except to blemish the reputation of a fine man. Besides, who would believe it anyway? Indeed, who would believe it? I think we should go. God rest your soul, Dr. Jekyll.